Mr. Prentice Yates. He's been doing this for a long, long time. But the one thing that I really admire that I heard about him when I first met is that he was one of the originators of starting the Cincinnati RIA. And there's a lot of these groups around the country. Is that not so? NKPLA. I was told that it was. And that as well. Northern Kentucky. In Northern Kentucky. But these groups have had staying power. It's because the right people started them and keep coming back. I know Vina had been begging Prentice to come back for a long time. He was thrilled he was back in the area and available to come speak. So tonight, I think we're in for a real treat. And I need to know more about this cockroach thing. I'm really intrigued about the cockroach thing. So I'm going to turn it over to Prentice and hang on, because I think this is going to be a great presentation. Thank you. Tom, Tom failed to mention that when I've been live on the air, going cross country with uh, Castro Depot, he calls in with these questions, and they're questionable questions, <laughs> meaning there's no meaningful answer. Uh, so I've known Tom a while. My email address, everybody got it? Uh, I am what's called an ender. I've done everything, I've been everywhere, all around the world, and I'm in spend mode. I don't buy stuff unless it's a good deal, and so I will do anything to help you do a deal. Anything. Now, if you want to compensate me, that's up to you. I have helped people that have compensated me, I've helped that haven't. I don't care. I don't need the compensation. I'm just saying, if you got those there. I'll be in Northern Kentucky till September. All right, just so you know, I have no, everything I'm going to tell you tonight is probably a lie. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're taping it uh, only because I am not engaged in any type of technical or professional advice. I'm not an attorney. I'm not an accountant. I'm nothing. So remember that. You're getting all this information from nobody. <laughs> now, I'd like to talk about the box. Anybody know Pete Fortunato? All right, two or three, no Pete. Uh, Pete was asked to go to and do a seminar on thinking outside the box. And Pete says, what box? So, some are in the box, some are out, and then some just say, what box? So I'm going to try to be like Pete, because there is no box. You just do what you want to do as long as you can get away with it. All right, Google me. You can Google me right now. You're gonna see great things about me. You will see no prison terms. You will see no felony <laughs> convictions. You will see that uh, some people think I'm a big shot speaker, and sometimes I am. Now the biggest joke of the century. Ready? It's gonna be you, Tom. Real estate is, you can't get rich quick. You just can't do it. Uh, 30 years I've been in it, and I wish I'd have used my plan that I'm going to give you tonight is how to do it. Every year for 30 years you buy a house. Let's suppose you pay $100,000 for the house. Suppose it's a 30-year mortgage. At the 31st year, the first one's free and clear, right? Right? Yep. Everybody go like, okay, yep. let's, yep. let's, okay, so it's free and clear. Sell it. It should be worth about $300. Pay the capital gains on it, you only end up with $20,000 a month to fool around with. Now, everybody says, well, I'll be 60, I won't have any income. You will till you're 91, then go on welfare. <laughs> so you're 30 years old, buy one every year till you're 60, cash the first one at 61. At 91, apply for welfare. It's, it's simple. <laughs> Your biggest disappointment is right now, not that I'm leaving or anything. Because that would be a disappointment, I'm sure. I don't have books, I don't have tapes, I don't have CDs, I have nothing to offer. Uh, no promises, there's nothing. I'm not giving you anything. Remember, everything I'm saying tonight could be a lie. But I do have a phone number and I have an email. So if you want to contact me, feel free. Just because I don't know any, I know a few people here, just make sure you tell me how we met. Now, my wife reads my emails, so you ladies, be careful what you put down. <laughs> All right, Jack Miller was my mentor. I think everybody here needs a mentor. 
So what Jack said is uh, the people that are going to get ahead are the people with the most education. Jack passed away in 2009, but he was my mentor. We became very close friends. Through him, I met a lot of people. Through him, I traveled around the world with my wife, and we had a great time. My background, 20 years in the Army. That's really not true. I was in for 20 years and 25 days, but I never counted. I was with five startup companies. We did factory floor automation. We did electronics. Uh, the last one, I had a great year. My last year, I had to sell $500,000. I did $2.8 million. I wasted most of my commission checks on Rolaids. My stomach just couldn't handle the travel. I did 500,000 miles, frequent flyer miles. I was either in Boca Raton, Florida, out at Intel in Santa Clara, or Hughes Aircraft in Los Angeles, or General Motors in Detroit. Other than that, I didn't go anywhere. So I quit. And I, I got an assistance on the quitting because I had six weeks vacation. I didn't take any vacation, and I wanted to take some off. And the owner of the company said, I couldn't do it, that's too valuable. So I had to go up to General Motors, I got in a car wreck. I come home, I'm on short-term disability, so he terminated me. So that was good. Now, Harold is sitting right here. Myself, Harold Christie, John Doherty, who is down right now, is in, taking a class with John Heyer in Orlando, and Roger Moller. Anybody know Roger? Roger has since passed away. We started... NKPOA because we were getting grief from the city of Covington is where it started and we had offices in the Ramada Inn which is now the Days Inn I think in Fort Wright and that building right next door is where we used to meet. Uh, taxes got me in a position where I needed to leave so in 98 we moved to Florida and I'm going to give you a little tip on how that move worked later. So I've retired many times from the Army from, uh, let's call it corporate stress, from real estate, but I'm still playing, and it, it's a nice position to be in. <clears throat> Been involved in real estate in North California, North Carolina, Mississippi, Kentucky, Ohio, Florida, and Tennessee. Other than that, I haven't been anywhere. Now, in Kentucky, and once I gave a class called Investing in Northern Kentucky and Nowhere Else. If you're from Cincinnati, I don't know how to teach you to invest. But we had the school that we ran, and it worked rather well. So properties in Fort Wright, Covington, Ludlow, Latonia, Florence, Fort Mitchell, and Crestview Hills. So I know a little bit about Northern Kentucky. Single families, multiple families. I only had one multiple family, and I converted it to a single. I could not get two tenants to interact without them leaving all the time. I used trust. Now, subject to, I know somebody's thinking, oh, you can't do subject to the bank will recall a loan. Does anybody know at any time that a bank has recalled a loan? Thank you. So that's just another, what I call junk. Owner financing, excuse me, liens, paper, partners, and shared equity. So this is what I did in Northern Kentucky. <coughs> I can see you, you're just waiting. <laughs> I was coerced into, coerced into real estate. I didn't want to be in real estate. 1986, I got married at a house right here in Fort Wright, Mars Place, 64 Mars Place. I bought it on a VA loan in maybe 81, five and a quarter percent in a market that was 16 to 18 percent. So it was it was a good deal. Uh, so here's what happened. My wife had a house, I had a house. We we're going to sell them both, get a condo. And a friend of the family said, no, I don't want you to do that. I want you to be a landlord. I said, get serious, man. I'm not landlording at all. He said, I'll make you this deal. Try it for a year, and I'll do all the paperwork. I'll help you do the whole thing. Try it for a year, see what you think. So I did, and he gave me this offer. After one year, he would take over my payments and in 10 years would split the upside, which 
you know, to me that didn't seem like a bad deal. And it really isn't a bad deal. It's a good deal for both of us. It's a great deal now that I know something. It's a great deal for him to get a five and a quarter mortgage in a market that's 10, 11 percent. It's a good deal for me because I end up with no house, but 10 years from now I get some kind of check. <coughs> so he, he forced me into it. I was amazed that we put it in the paper for 625 rent and 37 calls. So my friend called the newspaper and said, well, there was a mistake there. That was supposed to be 665. That weaned it down to only 20 calls. So 64 Morris Place is right over. Uh, a lot of people might know where that is, but that's a nice little house. It was a good rental property. And I sold that, I don't know how many years ago. So uh, my first house, this is my first thing. I had heard all of the, oh, the gurus tell, is what you do, how you make your money. You buy a house, then you fix it up, then you refinance it and get, your, get money out. You take money out. Well, that sounds really great, except because you're still going to pay that money back. So my first house was a VA foreclosure at 610 Highland. I paid 34 for it in 93. That 42 is because my daughter bought it out from under me. She did it to me three times. But you see, the, it went up, and then I find out that a guy calls me and said, your old house is for sale for $18,000. Now, does anybody know Young Pan? Nobody. All right. Young Pan, this is how it's deeded. I looked it up, Equity Trust. Everybody know about equity trust? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I would suggest that whoever, I'd write the name down, I'd find the guy. He's a player. He is a player. Look, people, just regular people don't use equity trust for, for their retirement accounts. So he's a player, whoever he is. I was kind of hoping he'd be here tonight. But he might be a real low-key guy, too. Okay, the lesson I learned I couldn't refine because it was a VA loan. I had to wait a year. Uh, home, housing opportunities made equal. Are they still in business? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's where the... Are they on this side? No, this, an attorney shakes her head. That means they are. <laughs> so they, here I am. I own my first house, and I get tested <clears throat> to see if I am an equal opportunity landlord. So I learned that in the first house. That was kind of cool. And the, it ended up about break even. I think it was very good investment for the first first time. Uh, and the, what I learned later on is the property just doesn't continually increase in value. So that's location, location, location. 2404 Warren. This was a guy who walked up to me and said, uh, I know you buy houses. I have a price. It's not negotiable. I said, okay, let's look. Well. It was twenty-one thousand, so I said the best I can do is fourteen. And I give you a thousand dollars a year on December first for six years, so your kids will have Christmas presents. Well, like, obviously it was negotiable, so that comes up to about a seventeen thousand dollar deal. That was not a bad deal. Uh, the lesson is yak tax. Anybody know Ralph Peterson from the Big Ria? He used to have these badges. What it means is you have to ask. That was Ralph's little thing, a professor over at Northern. All right, 1032. <laughs> when I was, uh, okay, it's a, it's a good story. I'm in the Ramada Inn. I had two houses. I'm a big player. I get in, Harold's there. He's got a backhoe, and I don't know how many houses. I don't care. He, he had more than two. Roger Mollering had more than two. John Doherty had more than two. So I'm all ears. I'm listening to these guys talk about deals and, and I'm, I'm trying to learn. So, I got a call after I did the Northern Kentucky investment only, nowhere else. I got a call from one of the students said he had a house out on Cherry Lane in Florence. And it was uh, 22000 he paid for it. He wanted two for the deal, so I did it. And it had about 40000 in it and then rented it for six ninety five. Now, here is the problem. I bought it and re not realizing that I had made, I knew I had major problems. The septic system had backed up into the house. So what happened is the whole basement was light green. 
become all the mold. So what we did is we sprayed the whole thing with bleach, let it sit five days, and then just went and power washed the house inside. It was it was a mess. Uh, I had my wife with me. We looked at it. The dirt from the path went right through the house. Next to the coffee pot was a sign that said, if you turn this off, I will kill you. They had a dog in the back bedroom <coughs> that was just eating up the door. You could just hear the wood coming off with those claws. But I still thought it was a good deal, and it is. So, I knew Harold had a backhoe. Went to Harold. I said, Harold, I got a septic problem. So Harold comes out and looks at it, and he said, uh, you got more than a septic problem. Your leaching field, uh, you don't have enough space for the leaching field <laughs> to be in code. And then he, then he says to me, why don't you just tap into the sewer pipe next door? All right, new investor now, you got to remember. So I had to find the guy that owned that lot. And I thought I'd be slick. See, this is house number three or four or five. I, I'm a slick investor now. I call the guy up. And I said, uh, I'd like to extend the lot on this house I'm rehabbing, and I'd like to buy the lot next door so I'd have a big yard. And he said, uh, Sonny, you wouldn't be interested in that sewer pipe in there, would you? So <laughs> he kind of had me. <laughs> well, that turned out to be a big deal. Uh, what's the name of that place, Lee? What acres is it? Hills? On you? No where we had this, all the sewer problems. That's Cherry Lane. That, that's that subdivision. Cherry Hill. Oh, uh, it's it's Highland Lane. Acres. Highland Acres. Highland Acres was cut in half by I-75. This guy knew all about lots that were not developed. So we worked a deal out, and I won't even go into the deal. I'm just saying that he turned me on to a bunch of lots, and then Lee Ricky built houses on those lots. So I met Lee through those lots. And I used to take donuts and coffee to him once a week because he knew all about real estate. He's about 80 years old. So he would tell me stuff that I couldn't learn from any of the other guys because they didn't know it. It's just he had been in real estate 50 years. So that's where deals fall into your lap if you listen. Now I could have blown him off Oh, by the way, I've had to pay a hundred bucks for that lot. That was the price if I would listen. And I listen, and he's telling me about all these vacant lots. So I ended up with those, and then Lee bought a few of them and put some houses on them. After 10 rehabs, I said, I don't want it anymore. I would come home. I'd be dirty, filthy. <laughs> I remember putting floor joists in. I, I'm just... I mean, I'm not a CPA or something, but I don't mind hammering nails, but I can got too much for me. So I determined that rehab wasn't for me and I entered the darkness of cockroach investing. <laughs> now everybody sort of, how would you like a roach crawling off your arm now ladies? How would that feel? Feel good? <laughs> I remember buying a house 20, 2110 Howell. We go in there and a roach dropped out of the ceiling into the lady's hair. and She said, make any offer you want, I'll present it. And we bought that house for like $9,500 because of the roaches. People don't like roaches. When I go over some of this stuff, hopefully you like roaches. I had distractors. I mean, people said, roaches, get serious. But see, roaches don't pay rent. So I have no nothing going out, so to speak. And for me, I was just looking for scraps. So I went in the scrap business, sort of like the junk man. I don't need the whole car, I'll just take a couple tires. And roach investing is stealth investing. No one really knows what you're doing, and when you compete, I quit, you can win. It's all yours. It's all yours. So I would tell people, never tell them what I'm doing until they found out and then they could start doing it and that ruined it for me, I quit. I was really heavy into tax certificates. Then a guy named Tom Vu came in town with one of these fly-by-night seminars. And lo and behold, I went down to start doing my job again, trying to get tax certificates. And these young guys have got the whole card index out. I can't even get them look. So I quit. So 
I don't want competition. I think competition is not good. Uh, in other words, I'm a wimp. <laughs> Next to each other in the dictionary is steel and stealth. They're not the same. <clears throat> you don't steal properties, but you can be stealth about how you find them and how you procure them, <coughs> and nobody really knows what's going on. Uh, the normal ways to find deals. Uh, what I call the box. You do all of these things, newspaper ads, house for sale, vacant, tall grass. I did the tall grass for a while and broke the windows. Uh, I didn't do anything else. Auctions, I would show up every once in a while there, acting like I knew what I was doing. Uh, all the rest is sort of, I didn't do that. I didn't use bandit signs. By the way, a bandit signs illegal here. I don't see any around. Uh, uh, the ordinances against bandit signs. Depends on where. Well, let's just take for right. Is there an ordinance? There might Nobody be, knows. They don't bother. Is anybody in real estate here? <laughs> <laughs> you got to know what the laws are. But anyway, let's suppose you're working in a town where you can't have bandit signs against the law. Anybody know of any city that has an ordinance against the law? Covington. All right, coming to it. So I always think there's no box and Pete's thing. How would I how would I put out bandit signs in an area that is against the law and put bandit signs up? That they're right there. I would find all the landlords and I'd put my bandit signs on their rental properties. And if I got a hit, I'd have separate numbers so that when someone called in, I'd know where it was and then I'd pay the landlord. Then I just walked right around it. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody. Uh, yeah. Yes. yeah, you did. <coughs> That's not a good idea. It's a great idea. Yeah, great idea. Man, this enthusiastic crowd. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I will say one thing. In Tampa, there was a motorcycle that was killed by a bandit sign. The wind got it, blew it in his face, and he hit. He got hit something that killed. So I didn't do flyers, I didn't do posters, newspapers are way too expensive. I didn't do I buy houses, I didn't do I pay cash for houses. I just said, I'd like to live in this neighborhood and I can close fast, usually three days after the attorney does the paperwork. Now, what does that give me? It gives me quite a buffer, doesn't it? You get a crummy attorney and they'll be as crummy as you tell them to be crummy. It might take 14 <laughs> days to do the paperwork. And then you, you can, then they'll be not crummy if you want it done in a day. But you have got a big buffer here when you say that. Is that what you put in your contract? Excuse me. What do you put in your contract in terms of uh, how many days? Oh, uh, what most of my contracts were written on one piece of paper, saying I'll buy a house and I'll close three days after the attorney says has all the paperwork. And then I always put subject to attorney's approval. Subject to attorney's approval. Who attorney would approve that? My attorney, right? I mean, not theirs. Uh, so setting up relationships. Let's see. You adapt to your environment. Scavenge for good deals. You settle for scraps and leftovers. You don't need the whole thing. Like I said, a junkyard. I'll sell you a tire. I don't need the car. Uh, stealth investor. And this goes, so we moved to Florida. Uh, the thing here, I've underlined this free seminars. How many people here have attended free seminars and find out they're not really free? Yeah. Yeah, almost free, <laughs> but not quite free. And I like this part. I could do this right now to you. I'd say, my wife has books and tapes, but please don't run. I, it's just a limited amount. Uh, please don't run over there now. And then I have my people in the audience that run right over there. And the next thing you run over there, it's a game. It's a game. The other thing I would suggest if you want to learn how to sell, go to a timeshare sale. They'll teach you how to close a sale. And if you are strong enough to get through that, you will learn many ways they'll try to close that sale with you. And you need to take that knowledge and use it. Uh, so my plan was I would have no excuses. I'd be committed. I'd get educated. As far as education, while I was putting this together, I tried to figure out how much I spent on education. 
and it's right at 50,000. I looked at my bookshelf up here and I have 14 seminars and then down in Florida I probably got 14 or 18 down there. So education is a big deal for me. Uh, the remote control, you got to take the batteries out and then run over the remote <laughs> and then throw the batteries away. <laughs> Uh, food, clothing, and shelter. You're in the shelter business. You're not in the food business. You're not in the clothing business. You're in the shelter business. So understand shelter. And I wanted to meet people. I met Harold, John, and Roger when I started. And then I started meeting other people. Jack Miller, people I would meet at seminars in Florida. And uh, I can call people all over the country. I know people all over the country. And it's only because I kept going to these education classes. So that's the best thing. And in this group right here, I met quite a few when we started NKPOA. We had about 30 or 40 people in it because they were all aggravated. Uh, <coughs> practice deals. That means I would sit with somebody and try to sell them something, anything. Sell them this remote. You've got to practice because you're going to get in a situation. I didn't even know someone like me that knocked on the door one time and I said, uh, I'm trying to buy a house in this neighborhood. And the lady said, ours is for sale. Now there was no sign. Well, I was screwed. I didn't know what to do next. I was going to say, I think I got the wrong house, but I didn't. <laughs> and so be prepared for what, what's going on. A mentor. You've got to have a mentor. You've got to have someone you can just talk to. And usually it's not your spouse. Your spouse will usually say, why don't you get a regular job? Why are we trying to sell a house so you can, we can eat? Uh, act as an agent. Sign everything as an agent. Now, there's a best investment I ever made was Black's Law Dictionary. It's 25 bucks, man. Used. Agency. Agency. That's really a good term to understand. I can be an agent on any deal. And then after I've got the deal, I'll be your agent. You see, I can do anything with that because I'm an agent. I'm not a real estate agent. I never want to act like a real estate agent. I'm just an agent. So the law of agency allows me to do that. So then you say, well, you just can't do that. You know? Okay, that's fine. I think you can. Understand the big boy game. What does that mean? Well, I'm gonna tell you what it means. When I first started out, I knew nothing about real estate except if the roof leaked, you fixed it, you paid the rent, you did all that stuff. So I decided, Boone County, nobody was doing anything in Boone County. So I went to the courthouse and I met the lady out there and I said, I'm a new investor, could you show me how the courthouse works? She took me around, she showed everything. How the book and page is stamped, how it's divided into deeds and it's the encumbrances and liens and it she showed me everything. She showed me how the tax liens work. She showed me how the list pendants work. About a two hour course and how the courthouse works. That proved very valuable. So I asked her to do a favor. She's since retired so I, nobody will find her I don't think. I said if you see anything weird come by where you put the book and page number on there Excuse me, would you just write down the book and page number and then I'll come out here and copy them? Well, the first time I went out there to copy, she had already made copies for me. <laughs> so what did I do? Thank you. And sent her flowers. And I would send her flowers about once a month. And she would tell me all the weirdo deals the big guys are doing, revisionary clauses, how they're doing all kinds of stuff. One thing I did learn, in a, it was one put in a trust. On page five of the deed had the successor trustee. So up here it's like John Doe, and you can't find a successor trustee unless you read the whole deed. Little, little cute stuff that attorneys are doing for clients. Uh, clients probably aren't smart enough to do it, but I want to know how the big boys play. And in Boone County there are some big boys. I don't know if they're out there now. They sure were when I was... Well, okay, when I started, everybody was a big boy. Yeah. Uh, different houses to different people. Like, 
that's a house for someone. <laughs> right? Okay, well think about it. That's a house for someone. Isn't that so, a mobile home? <laughs> yeah, that's a that's Woodstock. That's a real Woodstock house, yeah. We take but what I'm saying is, in. don't box yourself in. And a house has to be just like this. A house can be a lot of things. That's a multiple family. <laughs> well, see, you laugh, but I think that's in Boone County. <laughs> but hey, look, I want to tell me how many doors are there. One, two, three, four, five, six, six doors, right? Plus this one here, seven. Every one of those could be considered cash. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Cash per door. Uh, that might be a heck of a problem getting insurance if you own that, but uh, that's a multiple family. And just some people are living like that, unfortunately. So you need to work at all levels. So be prepared, you control one of the three, the principal interest of term. I would make offers that said, I will give you $500,000 for your house, or I'll pay you $300 a month until paid. I'll get 500000 and I would pay 300 a month until it's paid off, or I'll give you 75000 cash. I always give them an opportunity to pick something. Uh, the courthouse. You've got to understand how the courthouse works, because that's where all the real estate transactions occur. If you don't know how it works, I would go there tomorrow and just act like you don't know nothing. It's easy for me. Uh, it might be difficult for you, but they'll show you that, that at least most of the clerks will. I don't know about Kenton. Kenton used to be a madhouse down there. Uh, understand what people don't tell you. You'll see I'm going to show you something that probably nobody here has done, and I did, and then I would listen to what people are saying, and then I would have to think about what didn't they just tell me. Be in business and chart your progress. If you don't do that, then you're really not just screwing around. Don't sell your integrity. Understand yield versus cash flow. Buy on terms. Sell for cash. Everybody understand that? So I buy on terms and sell for cash. So what do I do? I make the spread or they do a sandwich loan. You buy houses and you sell and rent homes. Homes. Doesn't that sound homey? Homes. <laughs> uh, focus. Buy things and don't loan money. Uh, a guy down in Florida needed some money. He had a uh, zero radius turtle lawnmower. So I lent him the money and then he could buy his lawnmower back. Uh, no asking price, only selling prices. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you this is what I'm selling for. Uh, listen to people who know the game, and that's what I did. I did with Harold and the other two guys. I uh, started small. It's a good drill. You don't need to be in the house business. Try to just take anything and sell it. Buy it. Go to the flea market. Buy a book. Find your friend and make a profit on it. Just understand <coughs> how, how this works. Uh, understand finance. Most people can't even calculate present value. They don't understand present value, future value. They just don't understand, and I, I would suggest you should learn. Uh, financial independence, meaning you can do what you want, and you're not trying to get rich. You're just trying to get in a position in life where you can just do what you feel like doing. Uh, and I'm going to say this, my plan probably won't work for you, so you have to have your own plan. Some of my stuff will work for you, but we're different. Uh, these are all the things that I think are important in this game. And uh, the last one is where do you earn money and where to pay taxes? Unfortunately, in Florida, there's no state income tax. I know, I know that bothers you, but it bothers me a lot that I don't pay state income tax in Florida. Uh, when you have properties in Kentucky, you'll pay, if you live in Florida, you'll pay non-resident taxes. But uh, you just need to know who's going to hit you the worst. I just saw it today at the golf course. They're going to charge 6% on green speeds. How bad is that? 
Okay. Pete Fortunato says, use what you got to get what you need to get what you want. And if, if, if you know Pete, Pete says, he said, I found this good house for $50,000. I just had one problem. And everybody will say, you were short 50000 I mean, he's a deal maker. I suggest his class in December is really a good finance class. He just had his acquisitions class. Okay. Nope. That roach droppings. Don't you like the... Doesn't that make you feel good? <laughs> Doesn't it? Oh, man. I can remember some of the houses I did where you spray up around the crown molding and the roaches just fall out. Oh, man. Uh, so you want to dress the part. You want to adapt to the audience you have. Uh, if you have property, you're dealing with underwater properties, you really should dress the part. <laughs> you know, you, you got to understand, you got to fit in. If you're a property examiner, which I am, then you, you want to look the part. Now, that's not me, that's obvious, right? I don't have a blue shirt like that. Anyway, roast dropping number one. And is what I, I ask this. How many people have door knocked? Okay, three. There's no competition. You get to meet people, you develop a relationship, and you leave some bait. Now, you can door knock up. Bill Cook will be in next month. He's what I call the door knocking king. He sold vacuum cleaners for Electrolux for 19 years, so he knows how to get into a house. He'll be doing that over at the main RIA, and he's going to have a door knocking class, I guess, on Saturday or something. But when you door knock, most people will do this. Door Who's going to open the door if you're that close? You got to, and you got to get over here. They open the door, and you say, "I'm trying to buy a house in this neighborhood. Do you know know of one for sale?" There's no danger here, right? None. So, if you don't know how to door knock, it's a bad deal. But I always like to do it. I like to meet people. So you're low key. I'm Joe Smith. I like to use aliases, too. And I am trying to find a home for sale in this neighborhood. Is your home for sale? Now, if they say yes, then I always say, why would you sell a nice home like this? Oh, this is beautiful. Even though it's terrible, it's, really, it's beautiful. It's their home, so it's really beautiful to them. Uh, then we look at a deal, and we talk about what kind of deal I, I'm willing to do. If, I, if they say no, I said, here's my card. If you find a house I buy, I'll pay you for your effort. Right away, you're going to say bird dogging. Who's going to tell me it's illegal? Nobody, because it's not in Kentucky. As long as you don't act as a realtor, and if you start acting like a realtor, then that's not good. But there's nothing saying you can't find, find deals for people. So here's my card. And there used to be a printing place here at uh, Kyle's Lane and Dixie. And I would get these printed up $500, 500 at a time. And I think then postcards were 19 cents. I mean, that's years ago. I guess 50 cents now. But it just basically said, if, if you help me find a house, I'll give you, and I buy it, I'll give you 500 bucks at closing. Well, the last house I got rid of, I was in Florida. Title company calls and said, uh, this lady has, uh, the last one I bought, excuse me, she has a yellow card with her that all wrinkled up, but it says that you give her $500. That was 10 years. <laughs> I said, give her the 500 She had kept that on her refrigerator for 10 years. Uh, and that was my fate. So when I talk to you, I give you a card. So you don't want to act like a real, that's, that is illegal. If you act like a real estate agent, that is breaking the law. Am I right there, attorney, lady? Yep. Yes, sir. Don't, uh, don't act better than they are. If they want to talk to you about baseball, be an expert in baseball. Just talk to them about it. Cash versus terms. Uh, don't act like a big shot. Don't use trade terms like, will you take back paper? Paper, what do you mean, paper? I got the newspaper. Don't say anything you can't back up. If you don't know the answer, say so. And always make two or three offers. Let them have an option of picking something. And then listen. That's my big problem. Even though I have two ears and one mouth, I talk more than I listen. And that's, in this game, you need to listen to everybody. Uh, going back to the one, one back here, I had a, 
a guy named, I called him Bud. He lived on the corner of Warren Street and 24th. And he lived up there and he uh, had worked in the Navy Yard or something. But Bud got to be my, uh, let's say, the gossip man for the whole area that I was farming. And I would give him a case of beer every Friday. He'd go up there and sit and drink a beer with Bud. Then he'd tell me who's shacking up, who's divorced, who's died, who's doing this, who's doing that. And then I'd go to that house. And that's sort of like, remember me? And that worked pretty well. Uh, become close friends. And this is what I say in the book and page person, whoever she or he might be, they know every real estate transaction that went on in the county. Everyone. They don't know probate though, but they know every piece of property that moved. So I would go in there and uh, just like I did and say, I don't understand how the courthouse works, would you please tell me? Then I'd find out who had that stamp and she or he would be my best buddy. Number three, vendor discounted paper. By the way, is anybody, uh, number two, has anybody done that? That's good. Okay, discounted paper. I ran across some, a roofer, and the roofer would do a roof and only take so much money out <coughs> to pay his health and to live on, but he would carry paper. So he had a lien on the house. So I bought those. And those are really good because usually the ones I found were 10 to 15, some 20%, and then I'd buy them at half price, so it'd run it the yield for me up to 35-40%. Anybody ever do that? Oh, look at Lee. You raise your hand, Lee, if you've done it. <laughs> uh, but I, that's another, another thing that, see, nobody knew what I was doing, but I was doing it. Number four, work for the bank. Anybody ever do this? All right. I decided one day, reading a mortgage, and I forgot what paragraph, it says something about the bank is authorized to check the collateral at any time of oh, reasonable hours and make sure that their loan is backed up by good collateral. Anybody ever read that in a mortgage? Well, I decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure a way to find out those people that are behind two payments because that collateral might be bad. And I won't tell you what bank. I came up with this little wild scheme of I would inspect the properties and I would take three pictures and I would charge the bank $25. They give me a list of the deficiencies of two months. I would make an appointment with the people. I would go talk to the people as a bank inspector. Nothing about them being behind. But, excuse me, what I learned is once you say hello, all they're going to tell you about, oh, that rat run off with that blonde down the street, I hate that guy. And then, of course, then I say, well, what are you going to do? Oh, my gosh, you're in a bind. And I'd end up finding out what they're going to do with the house. If I got the people out of the house before foreclosure, it was a thousand bucks. And in the early 90s, a thousand was pretty good for doing that. Now, uh, two or three thousand might be right. So, I did that, and what happened is the bank, I did so good in 41017, they gave me 41015, which I think is Boone County, not sure. But I couldn't keep up, so I had to quit. But that's a good little scheme there. I knew, I knew who was behind before anybody knew who was behind. So that's another, another game. Okay, obscure list. I used to send out those yellow cards to off-the-wall things like, how about inmates? If they're in Kent County Jail, aren't they, don't they live in Kent County? Yes, if they're in Boone County Jail, they usually live in Boone County. What's wrong with them getting some mail? Anyway, nobody's done that either. God, what? Is this real estate investing? <laughs> All right, bonds. People go to jail, have to get bonds. They get locked up. What about whoever put the bond up must have a house. Usually that requires a house unless it's a cash bond. So why would you not look at who's posting bonds and write them a letter about you buy houses? Uh, missingmoney.com. Who knows about that? I can't believe this. I'm going to tell you. Uh, this is, okay, remember I told you everything I said is lying. 
This is the truth. <laughs> this is the absolute truth. Missingmoney.com. Log on. Put your name in. I've recovered about twenty thousand dollars. Some of it's mine, some of it's other family members. Uh, we've just got one now, we're trying to straighten up for 9200 Missingmoney.com. Who didn't write that down? I'll do it for you. <laughs> I did that. Now how did I learn about it? Some attorney wrote me and said, oh, there's some money here in Florida. Uh, for 20%, we'll get it for you. So I put the heck, he signed. And uh, so missingmoney.com. And it'll check all across the U.S. Uh, any name in the paper. Now, uh, I have a piece of paper here. I don't buy the paper because I think it's $2. And they use like font 4, and I'm an old guy. But I found this list of people in this week's paper. And look at the names, and uh, the addresses are already there. People that didn't pay their taxes. If you're not writing to these people, you're missing out. If they can't pay their taxes, they might want to sell their house. It's all here. I want uh, this people here, here that are here. So I won't disclose them. Because, uh, <laughs> I'm just telling you that cost me two bucks to get the list. But I'm gonna help you out. You can go to Kent County. You can log on the website. They're all there. Those are people that haven't paid the taxes. Uh, on death, if you died, you've got a card. Yeah, I sent it right to the house. If there's a murder in a house, I'd send it right to them. Hell knows about a trailer I bought one time, that terrible murder. Used a uh, bondo, filled the bullet holes inside the house, rent it. Uh, set the whole thing up, cost a thousand bucks, and the rent was uh, four ninety five a month. So you might say that's a good investment. Yeah. Uh, how did I get in that? Mississippi, when I got out of the service, I went to law school at Ole Miss, and we bought a house in Oxford, Mississippi. So we're in the, we're in the house. It's closed. It's everything. A little kid comes next door and says to my daughter, you're in the death house. You're in the death house. <laughs> so my daughter comes running in. She said, Dad, we're in the death house. I said, death? What are you talking about? And lo and behold, little kid comes in and points the bullet hole out where they attached the bullet holes in the wall. So that's why I learned about death houses. Because we had one. Uh, Out-of-state owners, I did that too. I, I took and yeah, got a list from Kent County of all the people that lived in Florida that own property here. Wrote to them. I, it wasn't a real success. I got maybe one. Uh, Tax certificates. Now, see, everybody buys tax certificates and tries to foreclose. I do it differently. I look at who owes money, and then I write them to see if the property's failed. Then I'll buy the tax certificate. That costs zero dollars, right? Just postage. You, you understand what I'm doing? I'm not buying any of these tax certificates till the owner tells me they want to sell the property. So that way I only buy good ones. There's no competition. Uh, anybody doing it? Okay, no competition. Uh, and then if I'm on the phone with them, I, I would make sure I would tell them that, you know, I do buy houses if they want to sell. So that would be my fate. Not my job to educate the government. Why do I say that? California Franchise Tax Board tried to get me. And uh, so let's just say I had Smith, Smith and Jones accountants uh, send a letter out to California and say, well, under what law are you charging this tax? And they sent it back and it said that they may impose a tax. So Smith, Smith and Jones accountants, not public accountants, but they were accountants, that, sort of, and they said, well, we assume that there's an option, we're taking an option, we don't owe it. Never heard from them again. So they don't know how to write the law. Uh, state income taxes here. That's a story I'll tell you because it's all over. I get caught up by living out of state. I was paying taxes, but I was doing it different than the way they wanted me to pay taxes in Kentucky. And I found a, I would say it's a flaw in the code 
that says if you do something this way, it's good. So I had my accountant in Clearwater go onto this section, and they oh, they kept beating us up they, and adding penalties and doing all this stuff. Finally, I had to get an attorney, and the state uh, tax board told the attorney that we were on the edge of a razor blade. Don't move. And I did slice in half, but it went. It went through. So. Uh, I did not offer any advice to the state tax board about how to write the code. IRS code, one summer I read the whole thing. Yeah, waste of time. That's where I found out that all professional baseball, football, basketball, all those leagues are tax exempt. So how do they do it? The team pays the NFL, Not if they're out now, but pay, let's do baseball. The Cincinnati Reds pay for marketing to Major League Baseball. So for the Reds, it's a business expense. It hits up here, and it's not income. Pretty cool, huh? So we were going to try to start some kind of like professional ping pong league or something. <laughs> we just, just couldn't do it. Uh, tenant Landlord Act. If your lease doesn't follow the Tenant Landlord Act, you're screwing around. And quote the, quote the part of the act, put it right in the lease, right in the paragraph. Okay, buy property and trust. Now your way, <coughs> you at closing you put the property in your name and then transfer it to a land trust. You get a cue. And then you make yourself the trustee and uh, no attorney would ever be able to figure out what you did. Uh, so, this is really, you might as well not even put them in trust. You don't get any, you, you really don't get any veil from putting it in land trust. There's nothing. It's just another way to title it. Now, my way, I have the owner place the property and trust for estate planning purposes. So if I'm buying it from John Smith, it's a John Smith Family Trust. And at closing, Sunset Trustee Services becomes the trustee. Now, my question would be to you, uh, and then who would be the beneficiary? Probably be something related to me. Where is my name in the public record? Thank nowhere. You. It's nowhere, is it? Nowhere. Can anybody tell me where it is? It's not on the deed. It's not on the trust. Where am I? So if you want to play, learn how to play this way. Now, an attorney would not be able to think, oh, let me rephrase that. The attorney might never find me, but they can still put a lot of pressure on the trustee. So what would happen if Sunset Trustees was a New Mexico corporation? Would not the legal process have to notify them? Now, I know there's a process, they can do it in the paper called in rem, where if I'm here and it's my property, I'm kind of observing what's going on. I'm just, just throwing this out. It's a little different, isn't it? Everybody do, everybody do this? Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's how I would do it. So when I was putting this together, I was trying to find the properties that I knew I had, and I started searching, and I found a few, but, but we, we were doing things like this. And I always like an out-of-state trustee. I think that's good. And I like a real trustee, not just Joe Smith or Bob Gonzalez in Miami, Florida. No, real. Because you want service on that trustee. You don't want to go and do it. What's called NREM. You don't want public notice. You want that service. And the one way they can serve out of state is through the Secretary of State in that state. That's one way. But I, I don't do that. This is a big asset that you're protecting. Uh, third position notes. Uh, third position notes are just junk notes. Except if you can get one to perform, then you'll get all your money back. Because really, three to five percent, but three to five cents on the dollar to buy them. So if you, you know, if you bought a ten thousand dollar note, what do you get in it? Three hundred, something like that. Three hundred bucks. So if you could get a few payments out of it, it would pay for that one note. Uh, I was able to buy, I think it was 10 notes, and the face on them was about $14,000, and I paid 200 for them. 
and I got two to perform. The rest of them is was that old thing like I ain't paying. But it is a lien on the property. Uh, if the property ever became valuable, then you would get paid. Usually, it never becomes valuable. Mm -hmm. All right, I was auction groupie, right out in Florence, uh, because nobody was doing anything in Boone County. I used to go out there and watch the auction boys, and there's only two or three out there in Boone County. Now there's probably a lot more, but that's all there was in Boone County. So I would talk to them, and then once I got to know them, then we would sort of divvy up the properties we wanted. Uh, I got caught doing that, and that wasn't a pleasant thing. The master commissioner was just out dressed normally, and, and he wanted me to see me in the office, and he had his robe on. So that was kind of serious. Uh, Andy Froelich. I, I, I don't know if you judge Froelich still out there or not. But he had a lot to say, and I did listen. Uh, all right. Monopoly. Rainy day special. I had nothing to do. So what I did is I computed all the returns on Monopoly for every one with one house, no houses, to four houses, to a hotel. Nobody's done that. And how many have done that? If you can't do it at Monopoly, where there's nothing there except 25 bucks for the game, how are you going to do a house? How are you, how are you going to, you play an order of, you know, much higher. So, Vetinor with three houses is the best return on investment. See, I did stupid things, but I learned a lot. So that means if I'm in a neighborhood, I kind of understand what it's going to take to do something in that neighborhood. And again, I get back to control one of the three terms, interest term or amount, uh, clear-cut goals, and this is all for yourself. Okay, some don't, you get to the point where you give money for years. I'm at that now. I mean, I'll give you money if you'll give me some youth. And so you, you just can't buy time. You need to know when you get enough, you just need to quit. Now, these people I recommend. Oh, by the way, you can, if you'll just send me an email, I'll send you this whole thing electronically. I won't print it out for you. These are the kind of guys that I would, I would vouch for. Uh, David Tilney is, is great for management. Uh, Dykes Botterford is in uh, Atlanta. He does uh, structures like LLCs. He does uh, trust. He does uh, things with uh, in investing. His daughter has a book out that will really show you how to crank up an IRA by doing partials. Uh, Cashflow Depot, that's all Jack Miller stuff. Uh, Bill Cook will be here next month. He's a door knocker and he's a deal maker. John Heyer. John Heyer is a guy that likes to take on the IRS. He's a really nice guy. Actually, he's doing a class this week down in Orlando. But his, his fund, and his rate is only 400 an hour, his fund is to take on the IRS. Jeff Watson, uh, if you know uh, Dodd Frank, a change from two deals a year to 24. I think he can do 24 deals. Anybody following that? I think it's 24. Well, Jeff Watson was a lobbyist that got that done. Uh, Cash Flow Depot, 297 lifetime. That has all of Jack Miller's stuff in there. It has recorded seminars. Everything is in there. I just suggest try it for $19 a month. You really have to take Cash Flow Depot and determine how much time, effort you want to spend in these seminars. But the good thing about a seminar like that, you can stop it and you can go back and, and listen. But Jack was my mentor. He was many people's mentors. Yeah, Tom. Aren't there monthly or some period of time? Uh, they'll have a monthly call on some subject. And uh, that's why I said Tom used to call in with questions he can't answer. <laughs> uh, now, the eagle and the clam. Everybody know this story? Well, the clam sort of lays there. Head just flaps a little, the water flows through. If there's any nutrients and stuff, it just sort of hangs in there. And that was it, you know, he just got that clammy life. Whereas the eagle, 
every morning has to get up, go out, kill something, and come back and feed his family and himself every year. Or herself. I don't know. The lady eagles, I guess they do the same thing. So, it's up to you. You want to be an egg eagle or a clam? And then the last thing is, have you ever seen fried eagle on a menu? <laughs> so it's all up to you guys what you do. You saw, I just showed you what I did. Some of it sounded like real stupid, and it probably was. Some of it worked, some didn't. So, any questions? No questions. I'll ask one. Um, you said you use a, um, like a uh, Sunset Trustee Services online contract. It doesn't have to be an actual person. Oh, it can be a entity. Trustee. It can, you can have an entity as the trustee on your land trust. Oh, yeah. Okay. I uh, like Huntington Bank has a big trust department. They could be a trustee. Okay. Yeah. It could be an entity. It could be a real person. Entities are pretty good because they don't die when a person dies. So if you had Sunset Trustee Services and the person you'd be dealing with dies, the, the company itself is still there. Yeah. Yes, sir. You had mentioned that Florida doesn't have income tax. Yeah. But what about when you sell the property and you got a big sales tax? So how do you work that? A sales tax on selling property in Florida? Yeah. Not that I know of. Well, you have capital gains. Oh, you mean talking about capital gains? Capital gains. No, but there's no sales tax. No, no sales yeah. tax on, on the real on, estate. On real estate. Mm -hmm. okay. Not that I know of. I think you're mixing apples and oranges. Yeah. Um, Florida doesn't have a state. And, oh yeah, they don't have any estate tax, state and they have no state income tax, and they have no estate tax. So maybe what you're talking about is when you sell a house and you have a capital gain. Is that what you mean? If you no, do it here, I, I was asking if they do have a sales tax. If house, you would pay no. when the, in Kentucky, sell. you would pay both federal and state, and in Florida, you would just pay federal. Yeah. Well, not on the sale of the house. I think what you're asking is, if I sell a house, do I have to pay a tax on the sale? Right. No. You pay tax on the profit, right? Whatever you make. Oh, wait a minute. That's different. We're talking about a sales tax, and, and I think what you're talking about would be capital gains. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'm not talking about capital No, I thought you were talking about sales tax. Okay. Yeah. I do have a good question. I'm, I'm wondering how this would work. i just throw this out. Suppose you had a house for 30 years and you depreciated it to zero. So the house is worth is zero, right? But the land, you can't depreciate land. So what would happen if you gave me the house and sold me the land? What would happen if you wanted to do a favor for somebody and you gave them a house like that? The house is worth zero on the books. I mean, for tax purposes, it's zero. I'm not talking about PVA. PVA is, that's their tax. I'm talking about income tax. The house, you have to depreciate it. And if I remember the code, if you don't depreciate it, it's implied you depreciate it. Right. So I'm just, I'm just curious. Gift tax. Excuse me? Then there's a question as to whether there's a gift tax. That could be a question. <laughs> now, I, I, you could try let's to just say I know people, in order to make a deal, might have put a car in a garage and sold the house and personal property. Uh-huh. Yeah. I might even know someone that did that. <laughs> but I'm just saying, you, you've got to be creative. Don't, if you let everybody box you in, you're going to just be in the box. Get out of it. Get away. Forget the box. Don't, don't do anything that, that's, uh, it's just like writing letters to inmates. Nobody's ever done that. What? They're lonely. Write them a letter. <laughs> what about this thing right here? Right here. There's one, there's four pages of people that <coughs> forgot to pay their taxes. I'll bet you there's one person here who wants to sell their property. What happens when I look here and I see one name and there's 20 properties? Does that sound like a tired landlord? Does it? Okay. 
I'm going to give you another thing that I did just because I had a skill that the other person didn't. There was a bunch of paper floating around. There was a guy named Joe St uh, Steger, I guess, from Boone County. He had the best western. He had three or four mobile home lots. He had parks, I mean, and he had a bunch of lots down in Kentucky Lake, a whole bunch of stuff. He was flying as hell. He divorced. No will. Okay, everybody with no will, raise your hand. Yeah, you're afraid to, aren't you? You need to get one. He had no will, so he dies intestate. He's got his girlfriend in the helicopter. The helicopter crashes, this is 1982, over here at the lake over there in Edgewood, whatever that lake is, on top of a dead fish, I mean a fisherman who's deaf. He never heard the thing come down. It come down and crushed that guy, killed him, killed Joe Stetter, killed his girlfriend. No children of majority. None. What does that mean? That means they have court has to appoint an attorney, a guardian, to guard this stuff. Well, the IRS jumped right in, and this is 1982. They appraised this stuff for $6.4 million and said, we'll settle with you kids for $2.1 million. His wife, his ex-wife, was uh, one of the officers in his corporation. They wouldn't let her touch anything. So it was a real mess. That's when I got in probing, because I went out and read the file. Now, there was an attorney involved that his fees were $100,000 a year. It took 10 years to settle this estate. Oh, God. We were able to buy $160,000 worth of paper that he held for $60,000. And the paper was between 10 and 15%. That seemed like a good deal. Do you need a calculator to figure that out? <laughs> no, we kind of understand the risk involved in buying that paper. But that's what happens when you when you don't plan. And if you don't have a will, you ain't planning. And you, I, I'll, I'll give you another story. Uh-oh, he don't have a will either, but uh, he's looking at her like, yeah, when I leave, babe, you're in trouble. <laughs> this is a sad thing. Uh, Miller made a bunch of us mentors, so it was about 30 of us. And one guy, and I won't use his name, he just passed away. He had airplanes. He had airplane hangars in Phoenix. He had mobile home parks. He didn't have a will. His wife calls me and told me that he died. And she said, I can't find any paperwork on these properties. And I know they're ours. Bad term to use. They weren't ours. They were someone's. So she had to hire an attorney. And in the meantime, he, had, he was running three companies, and she wasn't on a signatory on any account, so they froze all their accounts. All the rents that are coming in off those properties are frozen. They've appointed uh, some kind of administrator, or whatever you want to call it, to pay the mortgages and to pay any fees coming up. But he left her with a mess, and that's property in Arizona and property in Panama. The Panama property went very easily, but the ones in Arizona, I mean, I feel bad for them. But I got to tell you, that's not the only thing that's happened. I remember a guy named Louie Too was a great guy down in Florida, and one morning he's eating breakfast and the lights went out. He just, he just forgot. His brain didn't work anymore, and he had a bunch of stuff. And uh, so don't, don't go without a will. Get a will. Uh, I would suggest a power of attorney too, a medical power of attorney. So if something happens to you, if your lights go out, at least your wife can make some decisions or whoever you want. You know, if you've got a bad wife, maybe that's not the right person. <laughs> you know, or, or a bad spouse. So that's, those, those are just two cases I know of. And then I, I remember another mentor got killed out in San Francisco, sleeping in the back of a van and the back door opened up out on the highway and we got run over. Oh, yeah, I mean, things happen. And they were from Hawaii. And they were in San Francisco, so. All right, any other questions? Well, I have enjoyed it, and I appreciate it. And I, do you have any questions or want to give me a call? Everybody can call me, but except Tom. <laughs> All right. Or disguise my voice. There you go. <laughs> Have you come back again? Uh, 
I'm leaving in September back to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> well, we would love to have you come back again. Well, thank you. Open invitation.